Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting big old knife right here. This is the Tuya Knives Hive. Um, first off though, in the name of full disclosure, I want to thank uh, actually the designer of this knife, uh, a guy named Vahit, who I've actually, I looked at one of his knives that he did a Kickstarter campaign for in the past, um, as well as Tuya Knives USA for sending this guy along. Uh, this was provided to me. As always, I told him I'd talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, might be junk. They still sent it along, but thank you very much for that, and uh, full disclosure, uh, we have to assume this is the best quality controlled one of these ever and uh, more specifically I've done my best not to let that affect the quality of my review so there you go full disclosure next thing size comparison this is not a small knife whatsoever here it is against your uh, Spydeco Delica your Ontario Rat number one as well as your Spydeco PM2 paramilitary 2 so you can see here that uh, size wise this is pretty be uh, this is pretty decent uh, decent and beefy uh, decent in, in short um, but we can see here is that the overall blade length on this guy is pretty decent. Um, it, it feels a lot, actually, I'm kind of shocked coming, uh, seeing that this is coming in at three and a half inches, because it feels a lot bigger than it actually is. This knife feels huge, even though I guess in practice it isn't. Um, so, uh, there you go, I'm learning something, eh? What can I say? Then finally, um, what the heck is a Tuya Knives? Like, uh, this is, this is Tuya here. Tuya is a brand new, uh, well, I don't know if they're brand new. They've been doing work for a little while, apparently, but they are a, an original equipment manufacturer, an OEM, a factory over there in the China here, and uh, they are just working on developing a U.S. presence at the moment, and, uh, you know, they, they, a couple of other makers have been using them in the past, uh, although I think under OEM terms, so we don't know. But either way, they are trying to push into the U.S. with an own brand series. And uh, I, I've seen no signs of trouble, like clones or anything like that. They don't seem to be involved there. So, uh, you know, go ahead and check this out. And I'm actually kind of glad I did. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So, and by the way, sorry, I've been really sick for the last little while. So if I start coughing and sniffling, that's what's, uh, that's what's going on. I'm just coming out the better end of it. So, uh, there you go. On the good side, um, to start with, I kind of love the bee theme on this guy. This is called the hive. And, uh, this whole thing has the honeycomb sort of thing. So it's got the honeycomb pivot, the honeycomb holes in the back here. Honeycomb, honeycomb, honeycomb. Carbon fiber inlay honeycomb. This is kind of interesting. You don't very often see inlays that are in weird shapes like this, but this absolutely is. And by the way, these are not just stickers. There is a chunk of carbon fiber. Can we see it underneath there? Maybe you can see it inside there. You can see it very clearly in the disassembly video where it kind of weirded me out. But um, nevertheless, uh, you've got an inlay here in carbon fiber in the in the B theme. I kind of like that. I, I think that this, uh, this could be a very interesting design theme. And indeed it is here. So um, th th there you go. I'm liking that. It doesn't take itself too seriously, which is another thing I appreciate. Next thing, this is a good backspacer. Um, you can see here, I mean, it's kind of weird to say good backspacer, but... Um, Nevertheless, it is. It's, it's not unattractive. It has a, a, some nice weight to it. Um, it, it looks good. It's well milled. It's technically nicely done. I just like a good backspace. So what can I say? Um, next thing, ergonomically speaking, this is pretty solid. I'm, I'm liking the ergos on this guy. Feels good in the hand. The clip is well sized, so it gets out of your way. It just, it works. It's a good knife ergonomically in the hand. There's not a lot to complain about here. So that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, this has a very nice clip and very nice carry design. What I mean by that is if you look at this, the clip is designed designed to hold this knife kind of like this in your pocket, which means that if you've got other things in your pocket, the knife is going to be kind of hugging the back seam of your pocket uh, rather than hanging out over everything else. That is a beautiful thing. This is well done, and that's kind of a detail that is uh, a little tricky for some makers to handle, but uh, has been dealt with deftly here. So that's a, a beautiful thing. Next thing, this guy has very nice chamfering work. All around this guy, although there are certainly lots of edges and things like that, everything is well done. It's not the case that there are any unsha or, uh, sharp, un broken edges or anything like that. This is ergonomically, like I said, it feels good in the hand, but also they've made sure to round off all of the relevant corners. Like even this corner here is pretty well rounded, complete with lock bar insert, by the way, which is not a bad thing either. But just like all of these edges feel good, uh, except this one, which is quite sharp, and that's designed to be. So, um, good chamfering and overall work. Honestly, the, the, the fit and finish on this guy is quite good. I'm pretty impressed with it. There were a couple of little issues we'll talk about a little bit later, but that's not a, not, not, it's not a big deal. Overall, fit and finish wise, this is in a very nice position. Well done here overall. Um, and then finally on the good side, the blade on this guy is kind of nice. Um, it has a, a pretty reasonable grind. It's not the thinnest thing ever. Would I be more excited if it were ground? 
around a little bit better. Yeah, probably. It's, it's it's still a little thick at the edge, but it's not bad. In the grand scheme of things, it's doing pretty good. Um, And it is M390 steel, which uh, one cannot argue with. Uh, I can see right there, M390. And by the way, that's Vahid, some maker's mark over there in the Tuya brand up here. Up here. <laughs> But, um, and, and then it has this sort of semi-mirror finish here where you can just barely see the glint of your Batman mask in the setting evening sun. Um, and that's a, a beautiful thing. So I, I'm definitely loving the blade on this guy um, because it has its M390, which is a great steel. It's got a nice finish to it. And frankly, it's a nice shape. with some flats and belly, etc. So, um, to me, at least that's what's good here is it's got a nice blade, good chamfering, and overall just detail work is good. Uh, good clip design and carry design. It has a uh, very solid ergonomics, a very nice backspacer, and I am definitely digging the bee theme. The honeycomb thing just takes itself not so seriously, and that's something we need to see more of in the pocket knife world. On the great side... Holy crap, this action is good. Um, yeah, we're all, all completely flat against stable, no risk whatsoever. Fires authoritatively. The detent on this is good. The detent on this is super good. 100% easy, easy peasy firing. And then on the drop... Oh, yes, indeed. This action drops shut like a... Oh, man, this is... This feels very, very good. Um, There are some very slightly smoother knives in my collection, things like the Grimm's Most. And yes, some of the Shiro's and whatnot get a little bit smoother than this, but honestly, this is a beautiful drop shot action for not a whole bunch of money. This is a Shiro action for ZT money, and I can't really argue with that. Okay, maybe Shiro's a little better, but still. This has a beautiful, beautiful action, and this isn't even... I haven't even cleaned this out again after a little bit more wear. So, action-wise, this is on point. This feels really, really nice action-wise. So, um, to me at least, that's what's great. This has just an amazing action for the price. On the uh, bad side, a couple of little issues. Um, to start with, this feels relatively big. Now, actually, like I said, this isn't actually as big as it seems, but it feels very large. Um, I I impressionistically, it feels like a larger knife than it is. Maybe that's as much a fact about my consciousness as anything, but it's something I'm not necessarily in love with. Even if it is only three and a half inches, it feels uh, remarkably larger, and it is a relatively big guy in the pocket here. I mean, comparing it here to your Delica... Yeah, it's kind of a beefcake. So, um, it, it's a bigger knife. Um, it is also relatively thick. Um, it's relatively heavy, relatively thick. Um, although it's got some internal milling in there, um, mostly for the, um, well, it's actually external milling for the honeycomb here. Um, it's relatively thick, and frankly, the blade on this guy is just, I don't know why the stock on this is so thick. This would be a much better knife with a thinner blade and thus a thinner grind. Um, of course, blade uh, blade thickness is not the same thing as cutting power because so much of that is thickness behind the edge, but it's much easier to get a thin grind on a thin blade, or at least companies tend to do it more often. So I really do wish that they'd gone with a thinner blade stock on this guy rather than going full-on thick, you know, whatever the, the heck thickness this is, which is kind of redonkulous. So, not a big fan of the thickness on this guy. Next thing, on the sharpening choil front, unfortunately, they didn't quite nail it. You can see here, the sharpening choil just needed to go out a little bit further, or this, uh, this grind here. <coughs> ah, pardon me. Really, I, I, I'm healthy, I swear. But, um, anyways, the, uh, sharpening choil, they didn't quite nail here. You can see here, this is not necessarily ideal. I'm um, not a big fan of that. Um, next thing, the carbon fiber inlays. Now, look, at some level, it's neat. It's kind of cool looking. But at another level, I don't know that I love it. Um, it's, I don't know. The, the fitment isn't quite perfect in there, and I almost think this would look a lot cooler if those were just holes, letting you see the blade in there. Um, I And frankly, would save some weight, too. Uh, not much weight, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it, necessarily. It just kind of feels like, oh, there are random black spots in there. But okay, that's not a big deal. That's more a matter of taste. Next thing, the distributorship for this company is pretty limited right now. Right now, it seems to be mainly done through one, their, their, their main website, Do Your Knife, US, whatever. Um, and I talked to the guy. He seems like a nice guy. Chatted with him on Instagram. Um, but the thing is, a lot of folks have loyalty and trust with distributors. So I really do hope that this is a temporary state of affairs and that soon you can buy these from any distributor out there in the world. 
who you know will take care of you rather than going through somebody who's, you know, you, you don't really you never work with before. Um, it's not a big deal, but I like to see better distributorship out there, especially for relatively new brands. Um, next thing, the blade on this guy feels a little bit over polished. What I mean by that is you can see there's a fair amount of distortion in here. Um, and part of that is just because of this grind being very gradual in there, but it just kind of feels like the whole thing spent a lot of time at a buffing wheel. Not a big deal, but it's it's a thing. Um, next thing, the uh, lock bar relief cuts in here are actually, that's the one area where these are a little sharper than I'd like, and especially given that they are uh, right near the pocket clip here, that can make for some, I uh, note that they are rounded down at the bottom there, so I don't know that it's a structural engineering issue so much, but uh, nevertheless, you've got a, a little bit of potential for snaggage as you're bringing this in and out of the pocket there. Not a big deal, or uh, not a big uh, fan of that whole choice there. And then finally, uh, actually not quite finally, this knife is a little bit on the heavy side. Where the heck is my scale? Here you go, scale. Um, if we drop this guy in the scale, we can see that this guy comes in at, uh, oh, hey, we're in grams. Well, 147 grams. Uh, let's try that one more time here. Uh, in ounces, we are at 5.21 ounces. Um, that's a pretty substantial amount of knife for uh, 3.5 inches of blade. And actually, unfortunately, the balance on this guy isn't quite right either. Um, we're coming in here with the balances someplace in this vicinity here. Um, it just feels a little bit further back than I'd kind of like to see it. So really, uh, th this comes down to, I, I think if they were to just shrink this knife overall, I, I think that would be a much more compelling thing. Shrink the blade thickness and more specifically shrink it on this dimension. If the whole knife was made a little bit thinner, I think the balance might get a little bit, I don't know. Um, so I feel like there, there were definitely some balance issues and some weight issues here, and that's the main issue here. Um, and so to me, that's what's bad, is that the balance is a little back, the knife's a bit on the heavy side for what it is. Uh, actually, it's it's pretty substantially heavy. The uh, lock bar relief cuts are a little sharp and definitely snag on your pocket. The blade feels a little overpolished. Distributorship's limited. Not necessarily sure I love the carbon fiber. They didn't hit the sharpening choil. And the knife on the whole is very thick and a little bit on the big feeling side, even if it's not a big knife. On the ugly front, the only ugly issue I can highlight here, actually, I've more or less uh, fixed, but you can see here that there's a little bit of whatever adhesive they're using to hold this in. When I first got this guy, had a fair amount of that adhesive just kind of up in the edges there. Now, I was able to get in there with uh, some rubbing alcohol and a uh, good old-fashioned, you know, standard US Q-tip here, and just kind of get around to the edges there and hit that over and over again, and I was able to get most of that out of there. But still, um, at this kind of a price point, I, I shouldn't have to be Q-tipping this myself. I hope they are a uh, perhaps a little bit more ginger with the adhesive in the future, so that's not such of, a, of an issue there. So um, to me, that's the only ugly thing, is that they, they really should have knocked that down from the factory. That necess shouldn't necessarily be my job. Um, on the final conclusion front, uh, look, this is a nice knife. At some level, this is a very, very nice knife. The build on it is quite good. The materials are there. Construction is well done, and the action is really impressive. I mean, seriously, this is a good action. I am an action snob, and I am perfectly content with this action. This is absolutely good to freaking go action wise um there are still some areas where it feels a little bit over uh, 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 over polished uh, i'm sorry lower budget that is um and part of that is that it is a little over polished the inlay work needs a little more care the blade is a little thick with a grind that doesn't quite impress if they had ground this guy like crazy if they brought it down to a super thin apex there Oh, man, I'd be singing a much, much happier tune about it, but even still. Um, and uh, frankly, even the design has a couple of little rough edges, what with the balance issues with these little things in there. Uh, but, you know, it's a relatively new designer. He's still getting his bearings. So to spoil this has bearings, so he's got them. But nevertheless, um, I, I, and I feel like the scales could use a little bit more milling to get that balance right. But the thing is, at the same time, this has the feeling of batting way above its pay grade in terms of action. This is a $250 knife, or 260 I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it handles like knives that, you know, I've had knives with, which are five or six hundred bucks with actions that are less than this. Um, it, this is very, very impressive in that way. It is not a Holt. It is not a Grimsmo. It is not a Koenig. It is not a Shirogorov. Those companies will have the edge both in terms of finishing and a little bit in terms of action. However, this is a 260 buck knife. And so the competition is things from folks like we, uh, ZT, Kaiser, Spyderco, Benchmate. And against that field, or at least the majority of knives from those companies, this is pretty competitive. I mean, in some of the competitors' designs, sure, feel a little more refined, but this is still pretty solid. And particularly if you are an action snob and you are willing to invest a couple of points in action that might have gone elsewhere in fit and finish, oh, man. 
Though, again, the finishing isn't bad here at all. Um, I think this would be a very nice choice. And so, although there were a lot of great knives out there, um, and this one probably won't be to everybody's taste, if you want a really, really excellent action with good construction, reasonable materials, and at a pretty reasonable price, I would have very little trouble recommending this little guy to you. Huh? Do your knives? No? Uh, okay. Anyways, hope this is interesting that this review didn't have you coming out in hives and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day and that you be happy. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just combing over this for, for funds here. I, I hope this review generates some buzz. Yeah. All right. Sorry. This is probably starting to bug you. Uh, okay. Bye now.